Hi, check it out. We've got a brand spanking new instrument for you, the Siglent SVA1015X. Thank you very much, Siglent, for getting this to me. Um, it is just hit the market, I think, like today or yesterday or something like that, or a couple of days ago by the time you see this video. Yes, it's a brand new spectrum analyzer, but not only that, check it out. It's a spectrum and vector network analyzer. Yes, it's a VNA. And VNAs are usually expensive uh, bits of kit designed for vector network analysis. And I won't go into all the details of VNAs and everything else. We'll just have a quick skim over this. But they're um, basically, this, I believe, is the first really uh, low cost vector network analyzer in your traditional um, you know, spectrum analyzer form factor like this. And the retail price for this is uh, 1395 US dollars for a 9 kilohertz to 1.5 gig uh, spectrum analyzer. But although it says spectrum and vector network analyzer and the model number is SVA for vector analyzer, that's actually optional, the vector network analyzer. Hang on, just let me face palm. Oh, so although Siglent have released this cool new Spectrum and Vector Network Analyzer, the Network Analyzer is optional extra. It's another 609 smackers. So that puts it around about the two grand figure. Could come under, maybe under uh, two grand with the uh, Vector Network Analyzer uh, street price, perhaps. I haven't uh, seen those yet. So I don't know what their thinking is there. I mean, you know, they could have killed the market. Every ham radio operator on the planet would buy one of these if it, uh, for $13.95, it had the vector network analyzer built in. Anyway, it is very cool, so we'll check it out. Now, um, Siglet were actually going to release the uh, SSA1015X, which was just the Spectrum Analyzer version of this without the Vector Network Analyzer hardware built into it. I guess they just depopulate the chips. We'll take a look at this. This is primarily going to be a teardown video, so we'll check it out. Um, but at the last minute, they actually decided against that, and they're only releasing the uh, SVA model, which is which has the Vector Network Analyzer hardware built in. So um, it's just a software upgrade. You pay your license, boom, you get your VNA plus other modulation stuff, demodulation stuff and other uh, cool stuff we'll take a quick look at. But uh, anyway, it is only 1.5 gig, um, whereas the uh, SSA 3000 model we looked at previously, which this one is not replacing, the 3000 model, actually, uh, the tracking gen was optional extra. But on this one, the tracking generator is included. But the new, uh, but the street prices these days of the 3000 model, the SSA 3000, is that it includes the tracking generator as well for basically the same price as this. So you can basically choose between a spectrum analyzer only, uh, but the SSA 3000 goes to 2.1 gig as standard with optional 3.2 gig, I think it is. Whereas this new lower end model, and it is lower end, even though it's a vector network analyzer, um, is only limited to 1.5 gig. There is, as far as I'm aware, no higher bandwidth option for this. So, you know, great for covering all the, you know, anything like hams and stuff want to do and things like that. And uh, uh, EMI pre-compliance and all that sort of stuff. It should be plenty for that, but if you want the higher frequency, this baby isn't going to do it for you. So compared to the SSA 3000, uh, the phase noise of this thing, practically identical, um, but the uh, noise floor isn't as good on this one. This is minus 156 uh, dBm, where it compared to 161 dBm for the 3000 model. So it's got better hardware in the 3000. So as we'll see in the teardown, we expect uh, significant differences in the uh, hardware. Well, it's you know at least significant enough to affect the performance of this thing. Speaking of which, I'll link in my teardown below for the uh, previous version of this, the 3000, and I, I'm going to pat myself on the back here. I think that's an absolutely brilliant teardown because I took a different approach to that one in that I took high-res photos and then I did all the voiceover and editing and zoomed in and I drew block diagrams around that sort of stuff. I may not go to the same, and that was a lot of work, so I may not go to the same amount of effort uh, for this one. So definitely check out the previous video if you want to know how a 
uh, spectrum analyzer works at a block diagram PCB level because the previous video covers that really well. Oh, and the amplitude accuracy of this one isn't quite as good as the 3000 model. Uh, this is plus minus 1.2 dB compared to uh, plus minus 0.7. So yeah, its performance isn't as good, but hey, if you can get a cheap vector or a cheap-ish vector network analyzer in your traditional spectrum analyzer form factor, this could be a winner. This is a good move by Siglent. So as the basic spectrum analyzer, it's basically an identical look and feel to the 3000 model. It's all the buttons are like practically menus, I believe, are all going to be identical. I haven't fully checked it out menu for menu, but it's going to be pretty darn close to identical. But um, a lot of extra functionality in this one. We can do uh, modulation analysis in here. Uh, the, I believe this one is actually fully uh, optioned up. So we can do, uh, you know, frequency shift key in and uh, stuff like that. So we can demodulate uh, signals. And uh, it's got distance default uh, stuff because we have this vector network analyzer uh, capability sort of built in and this extra hardware building that allows us to do like distance default. Fantastic. And of course, what everyone's going to be excited about is the vector network analyzer capability. And if we go in here and take a look, log magnitude, we can do phase, we can do group delay, terrific stuff. And we can do Smith charts, Five different types of Smith charts. I won't go into them, but absolutely fantastic. I mean, you know, like like the hams are all getting all moist just watching this, thinking about having one of these puppies. So not only your Smith charts, but your polar uh, plots as well. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, linear and log mag. What else we got here? Um, the uh, SWR ratio. Brilliant. And yes, it is only a uh, two-port uh, VNA. Of course, it's none of that four-port uh, rubbish that you'll pay, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars for, or something like that. But uh, you know, two ports more than good enough to do all sorts of, you know, antenna calibrations and all sorts of stuff in your um, RF field. That there's probably a dozen applications that I wouldn't even know about because that's just not my field. Anyway, it does have a uh, resolution bandwidth that can go all the way with LBJ down to one kilo, uh, one hertz. Trust me, you can get down there. And it's got uh, optional EMI uh, filter in as well. Once again, there's a whole bunch of options for this thing, including um, RF uh, field probes and stuff like that, uh, which you've seen in many of my uh, previous uh, videos. And oh, the, you know, a ton of options. So, you know, really it, it is. Uh, it's probably going to be an impressively priced bit of kit for uh, EMI uh, pre-compliance and all of uh, your low-end vector network analyzer stuff. Terrific. Anyway, it's identical to the 3000 we're seeing before. It's got a headphone port, USB. We've got the uh, tracking generator, which comes standard, which is fantastic. RF input up to uh, plus 30 uh, dBm max or 50 volts uh, DC maximum, which is uh, pretty generous. Uh, reverse voltage maximum, 50 volts uh, DC on the tracking gen source. And if we have a look at the back, um, standard uh, Ethernet LAN with uh, remote uh, web viewing and web browsing, stuff like that. Um, external 10 meg reference, and we can get our 10 meg out. Um, it's going to have a reasonable clock. As I looked in the previous video, uh, the 3000 model actually had a better clock than the Rigol uh, unit. External trigger in, and your Kensington lock, and that's all she wrote. Beauty. Feels like a solid bit of kit. And it does take a while to boot too, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds or something. I'm not going to write home to my mum about it. Anyway, I forgot to mention, yes, it is all touchy-feely touch scope. Um, it is, come on, there we go. Whoop, we can pop up this. One little annoying bug here. I don't like, you can pop up this menu, but I can't get rid of it. How the hell do I get rid of it? Anyway, like direct buttons like screenshot and things like that really is quite cool, but you don't have to use the uh, touch functionality if you don't want to. You can do it all with the uh, good old buttons. Speaking of which, the screen is very bright. I do actually have my uh, studio lights on here, so if I turn those off, it's actually, you know, it really is quite uh, nice. The view angle on it uh, going a bit low, um, uh, going past the horizontal, actually. Sorry about that. If you go to the low angle like that, of course, you lose some of your uh, graticule 
um, and stuff like that. So if you've got it mounted high up on a bench, it's probably not the best thing. Um, you really have to be looking pretty much either straight on or sort of down at an angle. It's designed for bench use. Like, it's like standing or sitting in a bench and looking sort of down onto it like that. Anyway, it is a nice big screen, 10.1 uh, inch, 1024 by 600. Anyway, let's do a teardown of this thing, and it's obviously going to be uh, significantly different to the SSA 3000, even though it looks like an identical unit. It's got their basic tracking generator, uh, the same tracking generator, and the same RF input, which is going to be near identical apart from the bandwidth uh, differences, but uh, topology-wise and everything else, in fact, a lot of the uh, chips, I'm going to assume that are going to be very similar. So only a bandwidth difference, but because it's a vector network analyzer, it's got to actually, and a two-port vector network analyzer, it's got to actually tap off the magnitude and phase of the source output. It's got to be able to measure that and the magnitude and phase of the RF inputs. So it's got to have like a directional couplers built in to actually tap those signals off to get your phase and amplitude measurements, which allow all your vector network analyzing uh, magic to happen. So we expect significant differences from a traditional uh, spectrum analyzer. Let's whip that open, shall we? Oh, that's satisfying. All right, four screws there, two on the top. Pretty traditional stuff. Should lift off. Arr, the flippy feet are okay, and I do like the uh, rubber baby buggy bumpers on the bottom. Come on. It's got to be a clip somewhere. Hang on. There we go. And, of course, can't see a damn thing. Got to get all the shielding off. Oh, it's no more trademark sigillant rust. Nothing. Anyway, got ourselves a header there. Hmm. All right. Got a few screws around the outside. See if we can lift this puppy off. Looks like the power supply is going to come out. We're in. We're in like Flynn. And, of course, we expect our uh, machined aluminium uh, s um, in complete block for the uh, uh, spectrum analyzer section. Uh, looks like we've got a tracking gen down there and stuff. Uh, we will have one of the, uh, the directional couplers down in there. So that's looking pretty sweet. And we've got ourselves a separate little processor board here. Don't actually remember what the previous teardown was. I'm going to have to go watch my own video. And we'll take a look inside the power supply, but we've got a little uh, pissant fan there. Um, I couldn't, like, it, there was a little bit of noise there, nothing really offensive. Um, airflow directly over this, which comes through the vent holes in the uh, power supply and also over the uh, network analyzer um, itself, um, or spectrum analyzer. A uh, little heat sink on the power supply, but main power supply down in here, well, somebody had fun, didn't they, with the uh, Celastic gun down in there? Wow, check it out. Um, Lelon brand, crap, Lelon brand, uh, main DC filter cap. But the secondary caps, I do believe they're Rubicon. Jeez, that's all right. Not too shabby whatsoever. Nice. Anyway, it does look uh, nice, well designed and laid out. So, yeah, no worries. They've got uh, nice folded metal work down in there, so no sharp burrs to uh, cut the wires there. Speaking of which, these are really quite sharp. I think I scratched myself on some of these. You've got to be careful taking this apart. Um, yeah, there's no rust, but uh, they've added extra bonus sharpness on there. That's a fairly decent power supply for a low-end uh, thing. You know, uh, could have done a little bit better, but not much. Uh, the earth terminal down there. No worries whatsoever. Okay, if we have a look at the main board, very significant uh, differences from the uh, SSA 3000 model from a couple of years back. They've now put all the process in which used to be a Spartan 6 FPGA plus, plus a TI applications uh, processor. They've consolidated, which was on the main board around here. Um, they've now consolidated that onto a single plug-in daughter board. And we've uh, discussed this. There's many advantages uh, to this. You could have like a standard processor uh, platform across your product ranges so they might be uh, doing something like that um, and also it uh, it keeps the all the high layer count uh, stuff all on this much smaller board so it's a little bit uh, cheaper and easier to test and things like that really nothing doing at all apart from a uh, Altera Max 2 uh, CPLD in there so you know nothing hugely uh, 
grunty or special and of course the rest of it is just inside these blocks here which looks uh, for all the world like the same sort of configuration we saw in the SSA uh, 3000 series but of course it's going to be significantly different because it needs those directional coupners and couplers or however they're uh, you know tapping off the uh, phase and magnitude for the ports and everything else to do that so you know but apart from the spectrum analyzer i mean here's it, your rf input is uh, going to be over here so this is your track in gen um but uh, like the cable ins all looks you know fairly identical to the ssa 3000 so that's interesting but as i said a lot of the rf uh, uh spectrum analyzer chain in here is going to be near identical it'll be identical from a block diagram uh point of view you know the adcs and other um stuff are probably all going to be the same and stuff like that because it's all digital if and all that uh sort of jazz um but you know uh, this the performance isn't quite as good and the bandwidth isn't as high as the ssa 3000 so i expect you know rf uh component differences in there you can't leave your poor little watch crystal flapping around in the breeze like that. That's what the pad's there for. Solder it down. Goodness sake. Well, hello, Mr. Uart. There we go. We're going to have our transmit receive and our ground in there. Five pin header. That's some sort of uh, probably programming interface because these two look like uh, different ones. But anyway, uh, we can get in there and uh, tap off the, uh, the bootloader and uh, jazz like that. Hmm. And we can just get the bootloader there. No worries whatsoever. We've just got our uh, serial interface adapter. Uh, ground is pin uh, 1 here. And pin 3 is the 115k board uh, serial output. We can tap that, use a terminal uh, program, and dump it. Beauty. So it turns out that we've got the processor. Looks like it's a uh, Xilinx um, Zinc. Uh, processor arm cortex a9 and uh, it's uh, i'll post in the code down below on the eev blog uh, forum and you can have a look for yourself but yeah it's all there it's running a version of some flavor of linux all right let's have a look at the tracking generator here as you uh, saw it's actually got uh, uh two connectors here uh, as opposed to the uh 3000 model which only has the one of course one of them um it presumably is going to be the uh required vna uh measurement uh aspect to that it's interesting that they put it on a separate board you can tell by the uh mouse bites in here that it was actually part of the panel um, the main PCB panel. So it was all assembled at the same time uh, by the same pick and place machine, all the components on here, but then it was actually snapped off and used as a separate module. Now, there's no reason to do this electrically, uh, really, because, like, you know, we've got the cable coming over here. Okay, if you want to have one point of ground, but actually physically snapping out the board doesn't really gain you anything electrically. You could have just left the mouse bytes connected and have your routed um, edge on there and Bob's your uncle um, but they've decided to take this out as break this out uh, these tabs here and uh, do it as a separate module presumably because this is probably uh, tested on a separate uh, test rig and it's just easier for them to do that than it is if it was uh, still part of this one main PCB panel here and we've obviously got a JTAG header here for the Max 2 uh, PLD there. It's probably just doing some, uh, you know, glue logic, housekeeping, something like that. I don't think it's powerful enough to do any real processing. Otherwise, they would have used an FPGA instead of a, uh, you know, just an old uh, Altera Max 2 PLD. Anyway... And I like how they've uh, numbered the screws here. Number one actually takes them out from the chassis, um, then takes apart these. So let's, should just fall apart. Let's just take a look. Oh, beautiful gold plating. Look at that. And got our distributed element filter, of course. Nice little bow tie arrangement there. Okay, to make heads or tails of this, we're going to have to uh, compare it to the previous model to see what they've added. But of course, it's got all your uh, classic uh, block-based approach. Look at this. And uh, the signals pass between the individual blocks like that. And they're all shielded. They've got the uh, solder mask removed or gold plate. And you'll find that's matched under there. They machine out the little slots. So the signals go, you can see that, signals just go between the individual blocks. And that's how you shield one section from the other. 
commoners mud, you'll find this uh, technique used on virtually, well, really any product, uh, spectrum analyzer or not, um, that has any sort of, you know, uh, gigahertz range like RF stuff. Even down, you know, on the sub gigahertz range, you'd uh, still do something like this. And the bottom, let's take a look. Yep, not much at all. Oh, yeah, some extra chippies on there, double-sided low. They had to uh, fit it in there, but the rest of it's just all uh, bypassing and stuff. Okay, as for the rest of it, take out all the number one screws and all the rest of the screws on the board, and it should, in theory, lift out like that. Once you get those cables off up there, beautiful. Look at that. There you go. There's not much on the bottom, as you'd expect. Just some miscellaneous uh, housekeeping stuff, some bypassing. What we want... It's all under here. So that is a uh, really nice construction. I like that, how it all just uh, comes apart in a block. And we've got our, uh, it looks like our LCD driver board down there, is it? No, nothing special. This ribbon coming over here is for uh, the rest of our front panel uh, keypad. And, oh, what's that 3M stuff down in there? Hmm. Anyway, we're not too concerned. With the rest of this, it's meh. All right, let's get ready for the rest of the RF porn. This should, yep, it's going to lift off. Oh, a lot more distributed element filters. Yeah, there we go. That's oh, not a huge amount. Looks like we've got some directional couplers down in here, as we've seen on the uh, previous design. But you can see the signal flow from the RF input here through the various sections like this around there. It's tapped off with that distributed element filter, which there you go. There, that's where it's, I suspect that's where it's going back. Um, this one going over to there. So we're tapping off that, which we probably didn't have in the uh, previous version, I suspect. And you can just see flow through the various blocks and I've gone through it in quite some detail um, on the previous one. It's like a 40 minute video or something like that just going through the architecture of a uh, spectrum analyzer like this but of course this has some v well it has a uh, two port vna capability as well um so i'll probably just go through the differences here um as always high res teardown photos over on uh, evlog.com if you want to see for yourself and yes well let's have a look at the bottom and yeah just some housekeeping stuff some bypassing, nothing hugely special. All right, so let's take a look at the main Spectrum Analyzer board. I've got the original SSA3021X, um, the uh, 2.1 gig slash uh, 3 gigahertz uh, Spectrum Analyzer, the original model from a couple of years ago on the left, and the new one, the SVA2015 VNA on the right. And I'll try and uh, keep the left-right thing going for the rest of this uh, video. And if you want a very detailed, in-depth look at how a Spectrum Analyzer uh, works on a block by block basis as in you know signal comes in here and then it you know signal goes down here like this and then it goes through the mixer and then like it, there's you know a local oscillator and all that sort of stuff and then it goes through a mixer and a saw filter and blah 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 and then the intermediate frequency comes out and goes in the ADC all that sort of stuff I've done it in the previous video it goes for like half an hour or something I walk you through each section I won't do that here um, for this VNA what I'm going to do is um, just have a look at the difference so I've got a photo of the main board here. Now the VNA, uh, the SVA2015, I had to actually flip the board. So if you, the writing's back to front on the chips, you know why. Because they actually put the physical components on the other side, effectively the other side of the board. You can see that with the, um, <laughs> with the connector up here. It's actually physically on the other side. So I just had to flip it so they match. And you can see it's reasonably similar but there are some differences, like presumably because it is lower frequency, it's 1.5 gig uh, maximum over here, whereas this design is designed for uh, 2.1 and 3 gig. They've got, a, I believe, they've got a 3 gigahertz model. So um, they're obviously looking for that lower frequency range and also uh, to lower the cost as well, because uh, this VNA is a lower cost product in terms of spectrum analyzer compared to the previous model. So let's have a look, okay? Here's our RF input here. It goes through a 50 ohm attenuator here. This is all the same. Now, this is interesting. The original one had a proper 20 dB attenuator. If you have a look in there, it's actually a uh, ceramic 
little ceramic job like this and uh, that was a switchable attenuator like you you know you go into the menu option and you switch that and it enables that but the new one doesn't seem to have that and it's not on the bottom either so I'm not sure if they even have I like you know I can't get the detail on these chips I'm not going to go into there but uh, it looks like that's just like a driver or whatnot um, so I think what they're doing is they're actually doing the uh, attenuation inside this what was a digital attenuator before over here they actually use a different chip now they've got a peregrine uh, semiconductor and here's the data sheet for that uh, peregrine semiconductor um, attenuator here and that actually I think that's where they're doing all of the attenuation in there so maybe this chip is like you know lower cost they've refined the design it's a couple of years later and uh, maybe if they made the 3000 model again they might change back to this peregrine semiconductor part I don't know all the performance isn't as good or whatever as the original 3000 model but anyway uh, apart from that, um, you know, it's it's basically the same front end as you'd expect. And then we've got a preamp here. We've got a preamp over here. I don't know. I'm not going to bother looking at the part numbers, but it looks very similar arrangement with those two 8-pin uh, chips there and there. And this little job here, which is probably, I don't know, is that just like a power supply, a local uh, regulator or something like that? Uh, that's unsurprising. And then I've probably got all this detail in the original um, tear down of this uh, 3000 model I go into like detailed data sheets on each one of the chips anyway then it flows down into the low pass filter which you can see here they've got it as a distributed element filter whereas over here they've decided well we don't need this distributed element filter rubbish um, we can just do this with our um, with our caps and our um, in inductors whereas that's basically what they're doing over here these circuit elements right these are inductors in here and these elements over here are capacitors and that's exactly what basically is happening over on this one over here we've got inductors and capacitors and that forms our um, low pass filter then it goes into the mixer I looks like the mixer might be it looks like it is a different part but basically uh, the topology is all going to be the same the crazy thing about this is if you have a look on the right they have actually changed the chip from the HMC 400 to the HMC 213 but the HMC 213 is just as obsolete apparently as the original one used in the original why would you use an obsolete part in a new product now the mixer is fed from this uh, bow tie low pass filter here and they've got the same bow tie low pass filter over here it's physically larger by the looks of it I mean the sizes of those boards are very similar but the so the characteristics are going to be different uh, this one's going to be probably physically bigger because it's lower frequency but it's basically doing um, exactly the same thing they've decided to use a distributed element filter there and then uh, this original design goes directly into the coupler like this whereas this one it's got some extra stuff in there so maybe it's got like an extra um, a driver or something like that I don't know what's going on there but anyway it's the same topology the general topology is the same it goes into a coupler like this but here's where uh, there's a huge difference here's the VCO the uh, voltage controlled oscillator the PLL this is the first local oscillator it's basically uh, the same I haven't looked into detailed in the uh, parts in there like you know they've got some regulators down in here to um, uh, you know local regulation there's local regulation all over these boards so you'll find like little chips here probably here here as well um, these are all like a uh, local regulation because it's not just the one 3.3 volt rail or whatever it is powering this whole thing to because these uh, sections are so critical you need to isolate power particularly say for a preamp for example that needs its own local regulation um, you know and this mixer might need its own regulation these are critical RF parts it's why they go to all the effort to separate all the sections like this and then shield them with the big aluminium block and all that sort of stuff so not only do you have to shield them separate uh, eliminate crosstalk between them you also want to eliminate uh, crosstalk by way of the power supply so you have local uh, regulators and stuff like that anyway 
we've got our VCO, our PLL, our first local loss later. Basically, the same thing happening here, okay? But look what's going on here. This has got a frequency doubler in here. I don't think we've got that. And we've got some single pole double throw switches in here, which we don't have over here. In this case, look, it's going directly into the coupler. Whereas if that was happening over here, it would have bypassed all of this stuff here. All this stuff is additional on the 3000 model because it's higher frequency and it has to get the different uh, frequency ranges. So this is the interdigital bandpass filter here. There's three separate sections and there's switches up here to um, uh, divide the signal into those and then uh, combine them over here, some more switches, and then it finally goes into the coupler. Whereas the VNA over here just goes directly from the uh, local oscillator straight in to the coupler and doesn't have all of this stuff. So that's a significant uh, cost saving. Um, obviously, like there's no cost involved in, say, these interdigital, um, these distributed element filters, the bandpass filter here, there's nothing in that. Um, no component cost, it's just uh, board space. But all these extra chips you've got to buy, you know, this frequency doubler, these uh, switches, these are proper RS switches aren't cheap and stuff like that. So it avoids all that because it doesn't have the frequency range and possibly the performance of the original 3000 model. So that's probably the major difference in this entire design. Uh, now, let's go back to the mixer here. So we've got our, whoop, we've got our mixer over here like this, and we've got our mixer here, okay? So, and then that goes into an amp here. It looks like it's a different amp, amplifier chip. Look, they've got a little um, QFN package down in there. It's a Hittite one. I probably showed the data sheet in the uh, previous video, but this one over here has just got a little six pin uh, SOT23 package anyway. That's probably like an amplifier. And then um, it's actually got these, looks like it's got them uh, back to front. Here it's got a bow tie low pass filter as a distributed element filter. The low pass filter is once again just done with uh, discrete capacitors and inductors in there um, for performance reasons. I don't know, they maybe uh, chose that. Of course, because the distributed element filter is actually lower cost. You've got to pay for these capacitors inductors, but you know, they're trivial cost in the scheme of things. Um, so maybe it was just a performance thing that they uh, uh, went away, um, they went away from the distributed element filter. Anyway, they've got the bandpass filter here and the bow tie filter back to front. Not that it makes really any difference, I guess. Anyway, they've decided to swap those two around. Um, but once again, we've still got a distributed element filter, bandpass filter. And you can see it's physically bigger on this lower frequency model than it is on the higher frequency um, uh, 3000 model over here. So, you know, you see some physical differences, but it's still doing the same thing. You can see the topology between them is exactly the same. It's a bandpass filter implemented as a distributed element filter. Anyway, that goes into a mixer over here, and it goes into a mixer over here. Exactly the same thing. Some physical location uh, differences here. Anyway, that mixer uh, is being fed from the second local oscillator here, which then goes into a low pass filter, a bandpass filter, and goes into the mixer over here. It's the second local oscillator, a low pass filter. In this case, I don't think there's any band pass filter there. Um, so they've just got a low pass filter. Once again, instead of a distributed element filter, um, they've got that as a discrete component filter here. But anyway, second local oscillator into the mixer, exactly the same thing. And then out of the mixer goes into a uh, saw filter. That's these two parts down in here. There we go. They're the saw filters. And I believe I included the data sheet on the previous one. Uh, I won't go through it again. But where are we? Yep. Saw filter. They look very similar to me. So there you go. Saw filter and then into the mixer. What is that? A <laughs> got to have a mirror to read it. Anyway, um, it looks very similar to the mixer over here, but no, I think no, it, it's a different one. You'd expect a different uh, performance mixer in there. Anyway, 
and it looks like there's a couple of differences in here the output of the mixer um, goes to a switch another switch over here they have the same switch part over here um, but basically then that goes straight to the output here okay that's the intermediate frequency output on the previous design uh, which then went via the coax but the new VNA is a bit different they didn't have uh, in the 3000 they had that as a separate physical block and separate aluminium block that had the cable going over and they had the ADC um, in there and the filter but uh, this so all this stuff is now implemented in the main block here so the 12-bit um, analog to digital converter which I believe is the same one I'll have to verify same one they had in the 3000 but it was mounted on the separate board but it's now built into here they just went oh bugger it we don't want to have a separate physical block we can just put it on this main board thank you very much and then another difference is that the VNA seems to have its reference oscillator under here once again these look like some regulators dead giveaway in that there's just a cap on the outputs uh, there so they're uh, powering all this stuff and locally of course um, and that's our 10 megahertz reference oscillator whereas that was external on the main board um, on the 3000 model so that's you know substantial difference there so as you can see like from a functional uh, block diagram point of view it's you know it's very similar but a difference performance level to the original 3000 model and that's exactly what you expect because it's the same topology spectrum analyzer you know it's all digital IF so it's you know got to get the intermediate frequency output and then it digitizes all that which is uh, you know different to uh, previous you know really older generation uh, spectrum analyzer like analog spectrum analyzer designs for example um, and they're doing exactly the same thing but at this point we don't readily see any huge differences for the VNA the only thing we see is like we've got this circuitry up here like this which doesn't look like much doing there's an unpopulated little RF connector there but you'll notice that the new VNA model has you know significantly different components on there are oh, may you know like quite similar anyway I'll have to show the bottom of that but we have an additional RF connector here that we didn't have previously okay so what we need to look at now is the tracking gen and we've got the SSA 3000 on top and the new VNA 1015x on the bottom here and you can see that they're very similar once again everything's mounted on the other side of the board so I've had to flip it so you can see here that the connectors are physically on the other well here on the other side of the board like this compared to the two models so that's why on the uh, SVA one you might find that the well you will find that the text is mirror image because I had to flip it anyway you can see that the topology is very similar okay here's our tracking generator output here and you can see that comes from pretty much identical circuitry around here we can go like the individual chips might be a bit different but of course we've got a different frequency range uh, tracking gen so you know you'd kind of expect that and here is the input coming from that uh, coupler that we saw on the main board and once again you know like this stuff around here looks to be similar to what's here I don't know what's doing here these look like McCrell uh, voltage regulators I think anyway um anyway so it comes in here does the same thing we've got a bow bow tie low pass filter like this goes up that chip there looks identical we've got this going across here here and once again we've replaced our distributed element filter with a discrete component filter but apart from that um yeah that is our tracking gen it's all exactly the same and all this stuff over here what have we got we've got a uh, well bleh, can't see that because it's mirror image we've got there h835 and h835 if you want to look at that mirror image so exactly the same stuff going on here on the new one pretty much but the only difference is down here look at this aha uh -huh. we have that extra RF connector going over that we saw on the main board that we didn't have before and you'll notice that 
um, whereas this is its own isolated block up here it now breaks that isolated block and the signal comes down here this is actually a digital switch down here we can pull up the data sheet for that one so these two parts down here are uh, HMC 284 non-reflective uh, switches DC to 3.5 gig for those playing along at home so you know overkill for what we need here so what it looks like they're doing is taking the tracking gen output and actually feeding that back through these switches into there like that which then goes via coax over back to the main board which then I think what's happening is they're using there's no dedicated circuitry to measure the reflective power because that's basically what you have to do in a vector network analyzer to get your S11 parameters um, for your uh, for your VNA is to measure the reflected power coming back from your tracking generator output because that's exactly what we have to do so what they're doing is actually using the existing spectrum analyzer measurement hardware uh, to actually then measure the reflected power so they must be sort of like multiplexing between doing the spectrum analyzer sweep and then doing a reflected power sweep it seems like that's how they're doing it anyway and if so that's a very way and that's a very clever way to do it with very little additional hardware I mean look you know just this additional hardware here which is basically bugger all plus a little bit extra on the main board to feed it back into the spectrum analyzer input and Bob's your uncle so if we go back over here and have a look at where this one goes back over to our main board you can see it actually comes in here like this so it's associated with this circuitry here it looks like there's just regulators and other stuff on the back so I'm not exactly sure what's doing here but there may be a path for this to come through is this an additional is this a switch that then switches this path back into here so that it can measure that reflected power over the bandwidth and use the existing use the all the existing spectrum analyzer hardware that they've got in here to measure that um, you know to measure the phase and the amplitude of that so I think that's I think that's possibly what they're doing because there's basically you know like there's no actual measurement hardware going on in here so I think they're just switching it through that reflected power neat huh in fact well, that's you know without deeper analysis that seems to be what's going on here and it makes sense because they're um, doing traditionally what is a very expensive functionality in a VNA there's a reason that they're very expensive and doing sort of like low-end uh, VNA functionality and blending it with a traditional spectrum analyzer that's basically all there is to it by the looks of it so how much cost are they adding just for that plus this over here you know just just a couple of switches and an extra coax going back to do the VNA and do some software smarts and multiplex between them that looks like what they're doing brilliant well done Siglent all right let's just take a quick look at uh, some operational capabilities of this thing um, this is as I said not a review because it would take me a month of Sundays to <laughs> look at every aspect and every feature of this product it's just absolutely ridiculous as is just any normal spectrum analyzer let alone one with VNA and other uh, capabilities just nuts anyway let's just have a look at uh, some uh, no typical noise floor here um, I've got an unterminated uh, input uh, resolution bandwidth of uh, 10 kilohertz just a smidge above minus 115 uh, dBm there and so rising up as is uh, fairly typical I think that's a little smidgen better than the 3000 series um uh, but i don't have the 3000 series uh scope here to actually uh compare it with you'll have to watch my uh previous video but anyway this is a much better result than say the uh rigol one there's just no competition really and this is with the uh preamp turned on now if we change our resolution bandwidth up here we can uh there there it is at a megahertz for example so as typical uh, the update rate is much faster at that um, and we can turn the uh, preamp off and on here here we go that's on and off it's not nearly as good with that uh, preamp off is it meh 
That's how it works. I expect the Spectrum Analyzer functionality to be basically equivalent performance, almost the same as the 3000 series. So I've already gone through that. I won't bother. Uh, what we're interested in is uh, some of the more, um, some of the different modes here. So let's go into uh, distance default here and let's give it a burl, shall we? And ta-da, there it is. I've just got a coax flapping around in the breeze here, just unterminated at the end. And sure enough, um, there it is, about 0.81 meters. And then we can, you know, plug in a, uh, a terminator on the end of that. It'll drop. Hang on. Expected to drop, but yeah, there we go. But yeah, we're still, you know, uh, 0.86 meters there, near enough. We haven't calibrated this thing uh, yet. So to calibrate it, we would actually need the calibration kit. And you'll see this in, um, not only just in this mode, but other modes as well. So you basically need that calibration kit in order, if you're doing, you know, proper quantitative measurements in all this sort of stuff, it basically you do open short, uh, compensa open short load compensation on the thing. Um, so yeah, we don't have that cow kit which is uh, like they should just include it like this is a it's on the front here spectrum and network vector analyzer it's a vna yet the vna is optional extra and even when you buy the vna you don't even get the bloody calibration kit with it like how much is that worth like bugger all yet i think the street price is like uh, for the cow kit i don't know a couple hundred bucks or something but God, they should throw it in. This thing would be a killer if it had the VNA uh, capability built in for the base price of like uh, under fourteen hundred bucks in the cow kit. Unbelievable. Dole, Pebcac. And if you're curious to see the basic uh, tracking gen performance, that's uh, one dBm uh, per division. There, it, it's fairly typical. I'm not sure if that's any better or worse than the uh, three thousand. Okay, so let's go into our vector network analyzer vna that's what we're here for and i've got it uh on the output unterminated uh it can only do uh s11 and s21 because it's a uh, two port analyzer and they're the basic measurements uh you've got reflected power and your transmitted uh power basically so if we look at s11 or the reflected uh power in here uh where are we we're one db uh per division there let's whack on our empty coax shall we and we should see, yeah, a bit higgledy-piggledy over the line there. Let's plug in our, this is over the full span, 1.5 gig. Let's plug in a uh, terminator on the end of that and just have a look. Where are we? We want our scale per division. Let's go to 20 dB per division. There we go. Sweet. And that's our basic log magnitude. But of course, we can do Smith charts or... Anything else? Let's have a look at um, basically log phase Smith chart. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's pretty. It's full of stars. That's actually very cool. Check that out because you can, <laughs> they were due to those uh, lobes that we'll get in over the entire band there. And uh, basically, I won't go into Smith charts. There's actually no markers on this thing at all there's no identifiers it's just a blank screen so that's you know not terrific would have been nice to have some identifiers on there um but these basically represent uh, uh pure resistances these circles so this one might be 50 ohms for example and then if you de and then these lines going out here represent your complex impedances going in your different phase angle like that so you know because we're fairly close to an ideal resistive load there it's kind of in the middle like that but we should see something funky if we actually disconnect this ready woohoo go <laughs> brilliant it's gonna get funkier though if we put it back oh i could play with this all day <laughs> The interesting aspect of this, look, if I just loosen this BNC, we're actually changing the character. <laughs> I just touched it there. We're actually changing the characteristic of the termination. If I just like twist it and loosen it like that, just a little bit, check that out. Significantly different just by mucking around with the load like that. 
Look at that, I just loosened it off a bit. Wow, see the difference, that's terrific. But of course, that's um, over the full span of, uh, yeah, oh, there it is, 10 meg to 1.5 gig. So let's actually change that. Let's go into, um, sorry, our span here. Let's go into, let's say, let's do, I don't know, 100 megahertz span, for example. It should sig show significantly less artifacts like that. There you go, because we're not over the full range anymore. And if we drop that down to 10 megahertz, it'll probably go to a point. Will it? Will it? Yeah, pretty close. And of course we can do all the different formats here, but let's not worry about that. As cool as it is, um, let's actually go back. How do we go back? There we go. And we can uh, change the scale, of course, of our actual chart here, our Smith chart. Oh, there we go. We're going to go under. We're going backwards. There we go. Small up, down to um, half. There you go. And up, we should start seeing above that. We should start seeing multiples. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> anyway, all the RF aficionados are getting very excited. Now, I was going to show you this demo with my telescopic rod antenna, but unfortunately, um, I can't find it. It's in the lab here somewhere. So we'll make do with this state-of-the-art antenna here, which is our yellow wire, um, and don't fiddle with it because that'll change your characteristics of your antenna. So we're basically measuring the reflected uh, power from the antenna here. So I was going to use my telescopic rod to show you that when I move it in and out, it changes, but we can do the same thing. If I won't touch anything else, we'll just do a snip of our antenna. There we go. That's going to significantly change, oh, get out of there. Significantly change our antenna. And snip it again. Oh, snippity doo da. <laughs> it's brilliant. Look, I love it. And we're going to shorten our tenor again, and tenor again, which of course changes the characteristics and changes what reflections we get back from the antenna. And we can visualize that in terms of complex uh, impedances on our Smith chart. So there you go. <laughs> it's fun. Anyway, what? Oh, you could play with this all day. It's great. Okay, let's try the uh, demodulation uh, capability modulation analysis of this thing. I've just got a one gig uh, carrier here with an amplitude modulated uh, one kilohertz sine wave on here. So let's go into mode and modulation analysis. Let's have a play around. Um, hello. Where's my AM option? AM and FM. I do believe, like, I think these are, like, you buy them as different options, but why I wouldn't have AM and FM? What the? What's going on? System. Oh, like, where's all my stuff? There's all our system messages, by the way. That's when I did the PEBCAC. I'm <laughs> overloading my ADC. Oops. Sorry. No, looks like it's not installed. AMA. Ah, oh, dip. Bugger! Anyway, bugger that. Um, I'm not going to muck around with the modulation analysis. Suffice it to say that if you fed in your, what do we got, um, your amplitude uh, shift key in, in here, then you'd be able to see your waveform if you had your AM modulation. It should be able to decode, um, demodulate, and show you that one kilohertz sine wave. That's the idea anyway. Anyway, I think that'll do it for uh, this video, which is a teardown and a quick little look at this thing. Um, as I said, a review video would take a weekend of Sundays to do, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that at this stage, but uh, others are talking about this on the EV blog forum. They have units in hand and they can, you know, do tests and uh, things like that. I'm sure there'll be no end of discussion about this, but it is a very interesting bit of kit. It's basically the first low-cost VNA in this this sort of form factor. You can get other ones that, uh, you know, plug into your USB port and they come with PC software and all that sort of jazz. And, and I think, like, apart, like, the good brand ones are very, like, double the cost of this one, for example, or significantly more. I know there are potentially some uh, cheaper options than this because this is basically going to be two grand by the time you include the VNA. 
Now, whether or not they're uh, going to uh, like do any bundling options, maybe not at the start, but as we've seen with not only Siglent but the other manufacturers, once these have been on the market for a while, competition comes in or the sales aren't what they're expecting, they start bundling in the options. And uh, if they bundled in the VNA for $13.95 or whatever, wow. I think that'd be an absolute killer. Um, like, it's not um, going to set the world on fire in terms of uh, vector network analysis. I mean, like, you can't uh, do, uh, like, your different, uh, like, you can't separate, as far as I, I'm aware anyway, you can't, like, separate the screen and display the different uh, functions and things like that. So that would have been nice. So it's kind of, you could call it, like, rudimentary uh, vector network analyzer, but it, what, what was that? What's that? Is that a bug? Is that a bug? It's going to happen again? Sweeping across? Oh, might have an acquisition bug there. I didn't touch anything. Barely embreathed on it and just yelling at it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, hmm, that's interesting. But, uh, yeah, I expect the firmware to be relatively mature because it's probably based on... Um, the existing 3000 series, which has been out for several years now, so I haven't been in keeping up with sort of like the firmware bug fixes and things like that. But uh, anyway, it should be reasonably uh, mature at this stage. And if you're in the market for a vector network analyzer, geez, check it out. But uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to compare something like this with like maybe a uh, low cost or a similar cost uh, USB based vector network analyzer. I know there's a couple of do-it-yourself projects. Uh, there's been uh, maybe a Kickstarter or two out there for a uh, VNA, hasn't there? Um, but anyway, it's a very interesting bit of kit for those into uh, RF stuff, not only for, you know, antenna tuning, but, uh, you know, diplexes and filters and all sorts of, uh, you know, RF-y type things that you want to uh, measure and calibrate the performance of. And in this case, this can do your basic uh, S11 and S21 parameters. So, um, in a bit of kit. You could argue that it's probably a bit pricey for the uh, 600 over 600 bucks for the VNA option, but I don't know. Um, you'd have to compare it with the competition on the market, which I don't have at the moment. Anyway, Siglin could have a winner on their hands here. It uh, pretty much comes down to uh, price and market uh, penetration and stuff like that. I wouldn't like to speculate what the market is for a uh, for the low cost VNAs and stuff like that. You pretty much got to be into the RF uh, side of things to get value out of this. If you're just a your regular basic hobbyist or basic engineer working on stuff, then a VNA is not something that's ordinarily part of your kit. But to I guess to have the option later to actually just buy it if you need it, then just buy the software license, bam, away you go um, with your existing bit of kit. If you're in the market for a new spectrum analyzer, then it might be worth a look, but it is limited to the 1.5 gig. It is, there is no option to go higher. There's no, as far as I'm aware, the hardware internal is only designed for 1.5 gig. They have no intention of uh, going higher. If you want higher frequency, that's what the 3000 version is for, but it doesn't have that vector network analyzer stuff. Whether or not they're going to come out with a, a like a 3000, a, a SVA 3000 version, I wouldn't surprise me at all in the future, but I don't know anything about that. Anyway, this one is a fun bit of kit, so it's definitely worth checking out. As always, discuss down below. EV blog, blog forums, the best place to discuss uh, test gear and stuff like that, without a doubt. And as always, high res uh, tear down photos down below, so you can have a play around with it. And no, I don't know anything about hacks um, for this thing, so yeah, I don't know. People might be able to do it in the future. Who knows? Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little look at the SVA 1015. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. The video, that is. I may or may not like this. I don't know. Anyway, catch you next time. Hello.